Okay. Review of the anatomical features of the endocrine glands of the human body. So we'll just go through the uh, from uh, the superior part of the body to the inferior part, the location of the endocrine glands and the important uh, parts uh, of those endocrine glands because this is something that you had done previously. So it's just an overview of the anatomy of the endocrine glands. Our objectives are to know the anatomy of the endocrine glands. You should know the basics um, or the important relation of the endocrine glands, the blood supply, and at times the importance of the nerve supply. So it's just the overview of the important elements that we did in the uh, previous times in anatomy. Um, basically, the endocrine glands are the glands which have a role in controlling the hormonal release or the chemical substances, which are known as the hormones in the body. And their function is to act on the target organs. So the endocrine glands are basically, basically the endocrine glands are the muscles, the duct less glands and they secrete their secretions are uh, in the body and then they act on um, the far away organs of the body so the number of endocrine glands that we have in the body starting again from the superior part or the superior to the inferior you'll have the hypothalamus the pituitary hypothalamus will be the controlling site for the secretion of the endocrine glands and the secretion they travel into the pituitary you will have some parts of the pituitary which will have secretions and some part will carry this will have the cells then you have within the neck you have the thyroid and the parathyroid <coughs> In the abdominal cavity where we have the kidneys, superior to the kidneys, we have the adrenal glands. Um, the abdominal cavity will have the pancreas where you have the islet of the pancreas. And then inferiorly or in lower lying structures, that is in the pelvis and the perineum. Um, so the females will have the ovaries and the male have the testes. So these are the structures which have a role in producing the hormones or secreting the hormones and acting on um, controlling the different functions of the body. Um, I think the, uh, the arrangement would, should have been changed. First, we should have discussed hypothalamus. Again, it's uh, one of the latest slides that's going to come forward. So we are going to start with pituitary. Now, if you can recall, there's a structure that is the hypophysial fossa, which has, which lodges the pituitary gland. And this pituitary gland is covered by the diaphragm that is known as the diaphragm cella. And on each side, you have the lining of uh, the dura matter, which separates this gland from the cavernous sinus. So this is the location of the pituitary gland. And then the pi and the erythroid, the blend, they uh, cover the capsule of the gland, that is the pituitary gland. And below the fossa, that is the hypothesial fossa, you have the presence of the sphenoidal air sinus. So the pituitary gland has a close relation to the sphenoidal air sinus. <clears throat> then via a stalk, it is connected <clears throat> to the hypothalamus. So this, um, if you can see the cursor, this is the pituitary and it's connected by the stalk that is the infundibulum of the pituitary to the hypothalamus. And the pituitary is divided into two parts, the anterior part of the pituitary and the posterior part of the pituitary. Now, developmentally, both the anterior and the posterior parts. Um, the reason that I'm going so fast, like I plan to go fast because we, we are going to uh, discuss a number of uh, organs and I, I guess we have to complete, uh, since we have to complete it in time, so I'll try to just focus on the important parts of the lecture. Okay, so we have the anterior and the posterior pituitary. The anterior uh, part or the anterior lobe of the pituitary is known as the uh, adenohypophysis. Um, as I had said, developmentally, the origin of both the anterior part and the posterior part or the anterior and the posterior lobes of the pituitary are different. So the adenohypophysis, which is the anterior part, this is the adenohypophysis. It develops from the rathkis pouch uh, or it's an ectodermal uh, derivative. And it consists of the anterior part, the pars tuberalis, and the pars intermedia. So this 
this whole part from the midline, this is where we have the pars intermedia, the tuberali tuberalis is a bit superiorly, and then you have the this uh, pars uh, inter anterior part or the pars distalis. So this this whole becomes the anterior part of the pituitary. The posterior part of the pituitary develops from the neuroectoderm. Um, descends from the uh, floor of the third ventricle. See, so the anterior part of the pars anterior, the, which is has the large number of um, glandular cells, it's highly vascular, and um, the number that's the con the contribution of the cells. The type of cells that you have is the fifty percent are the chromophobes, thirty five percent are acidophils, and fifteen percent are the basophils. So the ac acidophils basically the growth hormone and the prolactin. Now this is something that was important and that's frequently asked: the type of cells and the uh, when you do the clinical, uh, the tumors will be based on the type of the cells. So, um, the acidophils, they, uh, I'm sorry for the disturbance that we are having over here. The acidophils, they secrete the growth hormones and the prolactin. The bisophils, are uh, pro uh, they produce the thyroid stimulating hormone, adenocorticotropic hormone, the follicular stimulating and the luteinizing hormone. Then the tuberalis is a small extension from the anterior part and does not have any prominent function in human beings, and you have the intermedia that can uh, secretes the melanin site secreting hormone and the endorphins. The posterior part or the past, uh, posterioris, it does not secrete, it contains the uh, terminal nerve endings, that is the unmyelinated nerve fibers, and you have the cell bodies within the, um, what do you call the hypothalamus, and the uh, those cell bodies, they produce hormones, and those secretions are uh, pro um, transferred to the posterior part of the pituitary. So you have the paraventricular nuclei, which is concerned with the secretion of the oxytocin, and the supraoptic nuclei, which is concerned with the secretion of the antidiuretic hormone. Blood supply is by the superior and inferior hypophyseal arteries, which arise from the internal carotid arteries, and um, they are going to supply uh, the bulk of the pituitary gland, the hypophyseal portal venous system. Now, this blue colored structure is the hypophyseal portal venous system, which connects the hypothalamus and the pituitary and carry the releasing uh, hormones from the pituitary. Now, within the neck, we have the thyroid gland. Uh, again, coming to the important features of the thyroid gland, it's an anteriorly placed structure um, along the second to the fourth tracheal rings. That is the location of the, th uh, the thyroid gland. You have um, two lobes of the thyroid gland, which are connected by a midline structure. So these are the two lobes, the right and the left lobes of the thyroid gland, which are connected by a midline structure, which is known as the isthmus of the thyroid gland. And the connected or held together by the pretracheal fascia by which it moves during the act of swallowing. We have two arteries supplying the thyroid gland. Okay, before coming to the arteries, um, um, the features of each of the lobe, they are somewhat triangular when you take a section. The superior part of uh, the thyroid gland is narrower as compared to the lower part of the thyroid gland. And the arteries that supply the thyroid gland are the superior and the inferior thyroid artery. So th there's a rich anastomosis along the yeah, onto the surface of the thyroid gland. So you have um, the superior and the inferior thyroid artery supplying the thyroid gland. The extension of the thyroid gland, it 
extends from the oblique line on the thyroid cartilage. So it's an, since it's anterior to the thyroid cartilage, you have a line, oblique line on the thyroid cartilage as low as the sixth tracheal ring, that is the lobes of the thyroid gland, and the isthmus is a bit higher as come. Therefore, the isthmus was between the second to the fourth tracheal rings, whereas the lower lobe is for the lower arm. The posterior surface, this is the posterior surface. So we have the lateral surface of the thyroid gland. We have the medial, we have the posterior surface, and then you have the uh, the anterior part being related to the isthmus. The posterior surface is related to the medial part of the common carotid artery, and more than laterally is the internal jugular vein and the parathyroid gland. So again, the posterior relation, one of the important structures that you have posteriorly, that is another uh, pair of glands which is which are known as the parathyroid glands. If you recall, um, the we have nerves which are known as the recurrent laryngeal nerves coming from the laryngeal nerves. The, the reason to call them recurrent is that when they arise from the laryngeal nerve, they descend down and you have a different force on the right or uh, um, different structure on which they put. So you have the right recurrent laryngeal and the left recurrent. The right recurrent laryngeal nerve hooks around the right subclavian artery. Uh, so it hooks at a low, uh, higher level as compared to the left one the left uh, hooks at the arch of the aorta, and then again, they travel superiorly, therefore they are known as the recurrent nerves. Sometimes there is a downward extension from the thyroid gland, which is known as our accessory lobe that may be present in the thyroid gland, which is known as the pyramidal lobe of the thyroid gland. Um, sorry, um, the downward extension from the base of the tongue or from the thyroid gland. So, um, the, during the descent of the thyroglossal duct, a part of the thyroid gland that stays in the path of the descent of the thyroglossal duct is known as the pyramidal gland or the pyramidal lobe of the thyroid gland. It may be attached to the inferior border of the hyoid bone by uh, by a fibrous um, element or fibrous tissue, which is known as a liberal glandular thyroidy. So, if you recall uh, the development of the thyroid gland, it is the descent along the thyroglossal duct, and the remnant of any part of the gland during, um, in the path of the descent is known as the pyramidal lobe. The superior thyroid artery is the first branch from the anterior aspect of the external carotid artery. So we have the superior thyroid artery supplying the superior part and the medial part of the thyroid gland, and it's from the arises from the external carotid artery. And again, this is how you have the division. That is, it divides into the anterior and the posterior branch, and then it supplies the anterior and the posterior aspect of the thyroid gland. Um, during the surgeries of the thyroid, it needs to be ligated. That is the superior because it's highly uh, uh, has a high amount of blood circulation or a richly profuse organ. So this thyroid, the superior thyroid artery, needs to be tied or ligated at the superior pole of the thyroid gland. <clears throat> Then we have the inferior thyroid artery which uh, arises from the thyrocervical trunk and it uh, supplies the posterior aspect of the thyroid gland and the inferior lobe part of the lobes of the thyroid gland. Then at times you have another artery which arises from the brachiocephalic trunk or the arch of aorta or the right common carotid artery which is known as the thyroid ima artery. Venous drainage is into the superior thyroid, the middle thyroid, and the inferior thyroid vein. The superior thyroid vein drains into the internal jugular or the facial vein, the middle into the internal carotid vein, and the inferior into the brachiocephalic vein. So these uh, part that is the arterial supply of the thyroid and the venous drainage of the thyroid, um, along with uh, the relations to the recurrent laryngeal nerve. Like at this point, these are the some of the important important points when reviewing the thyroid gland because you can always recall the lobes, the isthmus, um, the accessory lobe of the thyroid. But this is something that is frequently asked with relation to the ligation and the um, pre preventing the injury to the nerve.
एंड द आर्टीरियल एंड द वीनस ड्रेनेज आर्टीरियल सप्लाई एंड द वीनस ड्रेनेज ठीक है फिर a brief description of the histology of the thyroid gland is that the thyroid is filled with uh, follicles um, has follicles lying by the cuboidal type of cells and they are filled with colloid then again the cuboidal type of cells depending on the activity of the thyroid will have this uh, um, circular or a centrally placed nucleus and the uh, the staining of the colloid would vary with uh, relation to the secretory activity of the cells then uh, coming to the parathyroid gland these are two pairs of glands that is the superior parathyroid and the inferior parathyroid glands and they are related to the posterior surface of the thyroid the superior ones they have a more constant position where the inferior ones will be slightly lower as compared like as the name says then freely placed they might be closer to the superior ones or they may lie very in um, at the lower part of the uh, thyroid glands the superior ones are within the pretracheal fascia of the thyroid usually at the level of the first tracheal ring almond shaped glands and slightly brownish in color that is how they appear on the posterior surface of the thyroid the inferior again the both the superior and inferior they are within the pretracheal facial sheath but the inferior may be outside the facial sheath and again uh, both the, the inferior that is the right and the inferior they may not be at the same level on both the sides so there is a slight variation in the appearance of the level of the thyroid glands um these uh, parathyroids are supplied by the inferior thyroid artery or uh, the anastomosis again they may be supplied by the uh, artery that is the superior thyroid artery that is anastomosis between these two thyroid arteries may also give blood supply to the thyroid glands the venous drainage is by smaller veins which ultimately joins the thyroid veins <clears throat> the function of the parathyroid hormone is to stimulate the secretion of calcium from the bones promotes the intestinal absorption and the tubular uh, reabsorption of ca uh, calcium so um, their function is to maintain a homeostasis of the balance within the calcium of the calcium levels within the body so under activity that is when the parathyroids are not working pro properly they decrease the level of calcium leaving uh, leading to hypocalcemia seizures and the spasm of the muscles over activity will again uh, cause excessive deposits of calcium lead to pathological fractures hypertension formation of renal stones and altered uh, uh, mental status then uh, coming to the structure that you have within the abdominal cavity uh, we have the in within the abdominal cavity the uh, endocrine glands that you do are the adrenals and the part of the pancreas so the adrenal glands are the glands overlying the superior lobe of the kidneys you have the right adrenal and you have the left adrenal gland um both the kidneys and the sorry kidneys and the adrenals are the retroperitoneal organs that is they lie posterior to the peritoneum the adrenals they again i'm repeating that is they are on the superior pole of the uh, kidney and they are covered by the facial covering of the kidney the right adrenal is somewhat triangular in shape so there is a slightly difference in the shape of the right and the left adrenal the right is somewhat triangular whereas the left is considered to be the crescentic in shape microscopically the adrenal gland is divided into three zones that is you have the zona glomerulosa with small cells that have a large amount of lipids within the cells then the second layer that you have that is the middle layer is the zona fasciculata which is the largest contribution 
um, of the cells that you have within the adrenals and the lowest layer that you have is the zona reticularis, again, which is going to have uh, some amount of lipid inclusions that are the fat that appears within the cell. So the fasciculator produces a glucocorticoids, the glomerulosa produces mineralocorticoids, and the reticularis produces androgens. Then below um, um, uh, this adrenal gland has two parts, that is the outer part, which is known as the cortex, and the inner part is the medulla. So this is the outer part, which is the cortex, which is divided into the three zones, glomerulosa, fasciculate, and the reticularis. And then you have the medulla, which has uh, a microscopic appearance of parts of cells. The medulla produces the epinephrine and the norepinephrine, which helps in the cardiac output that is maintaining the uh, blood pressure and the vascular resistance. So the, the, these are the uh, hormones that are secreted by the adrenals. The aldosterone, the, it helps in the reabsorption of sodium uh, and potassium. The cortisol, it stimulates the protein uh, breakdown. And again, uh, it has a response in the injury uh, to the cell body and androgens, they help in the sexual de development of an individual. The adrenals are supplied by the inferior phrenic artery, the aorta, and the renal artery. So um, you have a number of structures or number of uh, blood vessels supplying the adrenal. The right adrenal and the left adrenal, you have a slight difference. The superior and inferior suprarenal arteries, they supply the right adrenal, where the left has a richer supply from the middle and the inferior adrenal, supraadrenal arteries. The venous drainage of the right adrenal is into the inferior vena cava, while the suprarenal vein, where is the left, drains into the suprarenal vein or directly into the inferior vena cava. The lymphatic drainage is into the paraaortic and the paracaval lymphomas. Now, coming to the pancreas, again, it's um, uh, elongated the structure which is present within the abdominal cavity, and if you recall, um, it is um, it has a number of uh, can be divided into a number of parts, and within the C-shaped curve of the duodenum lies the that is the location or the uh, where you have the main bulk of the pancreas uh, located. Um, it lies somewhat within the transpyloric plane. Again, being a tubular structure, you have a number of parts of the pancreas. That is, you have the head, which is within the cavity of the duodenum. Then you have the neck, the body of the pancreas, and then the tapered end of the pancreas that is known as the tail of the pancreas. The tail is directed towards the uh, hilum of the spleen. So this is the direction that is from, uh, from the right it moves towards the left side where you have the head gradually uh, tapering to the neck body and then you have the tip of the pancreas which is known as the tail of the pancreas directed towards the hilum of the uh, spleen. Another process which arises from the medial aspect of the head of the pancreas and slightly diverted in few medially is the uncinate process of the pancreas. This is the uncinate process of the pancreas. It's an endodermal organ develops from the ventral and the dorsal pancreatic buds. That is, first you have the origin of the dorsal and the ventral pancreatic uh, buds, and then they rotate and they cause the fusion, uh, ultimately leading to a single structure, which is known as the pancreas. So we are not going to go into the detail of the development of the pancreas at this level. Okay, the, um, I'll just go through the important relations that we have with the head of the, uh, sorry, uh, with the different parts of the pancreas. Um, again, except for the tail of the pancreas, the major part of the pancreas is a retroperitoneal structure. The uh, head of the pancreas lies within, a, in the concavity of the duodenum. 
and the anterior relations to the head of the pancreas are the pylorus of the stomach and you have the neck of the pancreas um, which is again related the anterior relation would be the pylorus of the stomach and posteriorly you will have the superior mesenteric vessels um, and uh, the splenic and at the level of the neck of the pancreas is where you have the superior mesenteric vein and the splenic vein uh, which unite together to form the hepatic portal vein The body of the pancreas, um, the anterior surface is, that is the anterior relation is the lesser sac of the stomach. The posterior relation will be the aorta, the left adrenal gland, the, and the renal vessels because it overlies. Sorry. Since it's related to the left part of the uh, or the left kidney, the splenic vein runs embedded in the posterior surface. So again, the splenic vein will be a posterior relation. The tail of the pancreas. Um, again, related to the um, uh, what do you call this hilum of the spleen. Anteriorly, it's related to the splenic flexure of the colon, and this part that is a tail of the pancreas may be injured during the removal of the spleen, which is known as splenectomy. Now, um, throughout the substance of the pancreas, we have a duct, which is known as the pancreatic duct. And it in, uh, joins the uh, common bile duct at the ampule of the bladder. We are not doing this ductal pressure. So this is the common pancreatic duct and behind on the posterior relation uh, coming from the gallbladder, you have the bile duct. This bile duct, it joins this common pancreatic duct at the ampulla of it and then it opens into the duodenum at the major duodenum papilla. So the opening of um, this common bile, uh, sorry, the union of the common bile duct and the pancreatic duct is at a ray surface on the internal structure of uh, the duodenum and that is known as the major duodenal capita. The smaller duct, which is known as the lesser duct of Santorini, it drains the superior portion of the head. This is where you have the, the lesser duct, um, which drains the superior portion of the head and empties into the second portion of the, or the superior part of the duodenum. The arterial supply to the pancreas is by the celiac uh, artery, which gives you the common hepatic artery. Uh, the, 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 uh, or rather, you can call it, you have the superior pancreatoduodenal artery supplying the pancreas, and you have the inferior pancreatoduodenal artery. The superior pancreatoduodenal artery is a branch of the gastroduodenal, which is ultimately the branch of the celiac trunk. The inferior pancreatoduodenal artery is a branch of the superior mesenteric artery. The body and the tail are supplied, uh, the additional supply to the body and the tail. This is where you have the body and the tail. So you have additional supplies by the splenic artery. The main branches or the larger branches of the splenic artery uh, that have a supply or uh, give you a supply of the pancreas are the pan dorsal pancreatic artery, the uh, pancreato magna, magna artery and the caudal pancreatic artery. So in nutshell, you have three main arteries supplying the pancreas that is superior pancreatoduodenal and the inferior pancreatoduodenal artery which supply the head, head and the neck that is the superior part of the head and the inferior part of the head and the neck and you have branches coming from the splenic artery towards so the splenic artery since it's um, towards the uh, tail end therefore supplying the tail and the 
part related to the tail that is the body. The superior pancreatoduodenal artery is a branch from the gastroduodenal artery arising from the celiac trunk, and the inferior pancreatoduodenal artery is a branch from the superior mesenteric artery. The venous drainage again uh, follows arterial supply, the anterior and the posterior arcades, they drain the head and the body, splenic artery drains the body and the tail. So you have the major area of drainage into the supra uh, pancreatic portal vein, the retropancreatic portal vein, the splenic vein. Infra pancreato superior mesenteric vein. So its ultimate drainage will be into the portal vein. So, uh, again, superior pancreato total and inferior pancreato total. These are how you have the veins, and ultimate drainage will be into the portal vein. We are skipping on that. Which Coming to the histology of the pancreas, again, we have, um, as you can recall from your previous knowledge of histology, uh, we have two parts of the pancreas, the uh, exocrine part of the pancreas and the endocrine parts of the pancreas. So at this level, since we are discussing the endocrinology, it's, um, the, end, uh, the major, major part of the pancreas is formed of the SNR cells, which is the exocrine part of the pancreas. Um, the other 2% or a very slight contribution of cells that we have is the endocrine part of the pancreas and the endocrine part of the pancreas uh, is represented as clumps of cells. So if you have a number of or, or a type of cells, that is you have the alpha cells, the beta cells and the delta cells within the pancreas, um, that is the endocrine function of the pancreas is performed by these type of cells, that is alpha, beta and delta. So the most profuse amount of cells or the largest contribution of cells is the beta type of cells, which is concerned with the secretion of um, insulin. Um, it's about 70 to 80% of the cellular contribution is by the beta cells. Then you have the alpha cells, which are about 20% um, of cells, uh, which are concerned with the release of and delta cells, again, they form about 4% of the cells of the endocrine type of pancreas, which are concerned with the release of somatostatin. And the least or the smallest contribution of the cells are the F type of cells, also known as the PP type of cells, that is the pancreatic polypeptide secreting cells. Again, insulin, um, as we have done, that the insulin is secreted uh, or regulated, the level of insulin is regulated by the beta type of cells. Now, the, these parts, that is the production of insulin and the modification, it's what you do in biochemistry. So this is what we are skipping at this moment. The alpha cells are concerned with the release of glucagon. So glucagon elevates the blood sugar level uh, through the stimulation, uh, stimulation or through glycogenolysis and gluconeogenesis. Whereas the insulin, it lowers the level of uh, the blood glucose within the circulation. Um, the inhibitory hormone that you have is somatost uh, somatostatin inhibits the release of the growth hormone and again, the release of uh, insulin and glucagon also. Um, then um, something which could have been done at the earlier level was the hypothalamus. It, again, the hypothalamus, the main role of or uh, the control of um, these uh, secretions of the endocrine secre um, or the endocrine secretions from these far away organs of the body is under the control of the hypothalamus. That is, you have the releasing hormones and you have the inhibitory hormones being released or produced by the hypothalamus release into the anterior part of the pituitary and then they, um, they are released into the circulation and modifying the levels of the hormones of the body. So the, uh, hypo uh, the other functions of the hypothalamus is um, the regulation of the 
water balance, the swallowing mechanism, regulation of body temperature, um, mood regulation, sleep wake cycle. So all the hypothalamus has the diverse functions in the human body. Then the sex, uh, um, the organs which are related with the release of the sex hormones along with the uh, adrenal androgens. The females, they have the ovaries and the males have the testosterone. Again, if you recall from your previous knowledge, the ovaries are uh, present in the abdominal cavities and um, they are under the control of the luteinizing hormone and the follicular stimulating hormone. And in a uh, um, in a mature female or in an adult female, it goes through a number of cyclical changes which are um, known as the uh, what do you call the cyclical changes that is the menstrual cycle and it modifies the release of the ovum and helps in the uh, reproduction of the uh, female cycle. So the hormones that is, it produces are the estrogens and the progesterone. And again, um, the hormones produced by the ovaries, they influence the sexual characteristics, that is the secondary sexual characteristics, along with the uh, production of ovum and uh, leading to the development of the embryo and helping in the implantation of the uh, egg or in the uterus. So the estrogen, it helps in the development of the female secondary sexual characteristics and development of the endometrium, that is the lining uh, of the uterus. Progesterone, it promotes the uh, it maintains the pregnancy and stabilization of the endometrium. So again, a variation in these hormones, that is uh, differences in the levels of the estrogen and progesterone would lead to the shedding of the endometrial lining. So, testes are the male uh, sexual uh, organs which are present in this total sex. Again, they are under the control of the anti pituitary hormone. They produce the sperms and again, uh, they produce testosterone, which promotes the growth of the uh, male secondary sexual characteristics, masculinization of a male and promotes the development and the male, uh, maintenance of, again, that is where you have the maintenance of the male sexual characteristics. Um, the testes uh, is uh, somewhat an oval shaped structure with present uh, within the scrotal sac, you have the head of the testes, the main bulk, that is the body of the testes and the inferior part of the testes. And the testes is divided into a number of, um, uh, you have, sorry, there are two testes and then um, you, there are a number of cords within the testes and they produce the set of, and the cells that they have, that is the Sertori. Microscopically, you have two types of cells, that is the Sertori cells and the Leydig cells. And these cells, that is the Sertoli cells, are the supporting cells, whereas the Leydig cells are the cells that produce the hormonal secretions, that is the testosterone that is produced. So this is the end uh, for... Um, overview of the anatomical features or the anatomy, a brief overview of the anatomy of the endocrine glands of the human body. So we are ending our presentation over here. Thank you very much for being part of this class.